Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome everybody back to another video and today we are continuing on with the Fantastic Four series of reviews, the Fantastic Four Marathon, whatever you want to call it. And today we're going to be talking about the sequel, the only sequel actually so far. Hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, which I have seen this movie before, but I don't know why, but I didn't remember a single thing from this film. Couldn't tell you before watching it again, before doing this review, I couldn't tell you a single thing about this. But since I have watched it, since I have seen it again, um, I do remember now... <laughs> And I do like this. I think this is a good sequel. I think this is a pretty fun, solid sequel. And it's funny because this came out in 2007, and then the next year they launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's just kind of weird how that whole thing happened and everything. But anyway, regardless of that, uh, this is a good movie. This is a good sequel. I do like this. And as I said in the in the review for the previous film, I never understood why these movies got hate. I mean, I know some people still do, but they've kind of gotten a better reception in more recent years. I just, I don't get it. You know, I guess it's like Nickelback or Creed or something. I don't know. Anyway, but before we jump into the rest of this, if anybody would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box there's a link to my paypal account no amount is too big no amount is too small it does not have to be excuse me just a movie review like this it could be a tv series cartoon comic book video game uh, random thoughts ranch streams commentaries and anything in between that's what the paid request is set up for so again if anybody is interested go ahead and Send it in, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. You want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know um, why I couldn't really remember anything about this movie prior to doing this review. Because I had, before I got this Blu-ray, I had it on DVD. I had seen the movie a couple times before, but I just, I don't know. It's just one of those movies that for whatever reason did not really stick out. I don't know, but the only thing I remember that it, the Silver Surfer was in it. I'm like, okay, well, I like that character, but that was it. But no, i watching this. I like it. Now, I didn't notice this, but this is PG. The first movie is PG-13, and I guess they decided when they were making this, like, let's not have any cursing, because that was the only thing that I noticed that was different from the first movie to this movie. The first movie had more curse words. This one, I think the thing says they're watching a video of the Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom and he's like, I like the part when he kicked your ass. And I think that was it. But other than that, I don't think there was any curse words in the movie. I guess it was a studio mandate thing or they wanted to go in a different direction. Like, all right, they can't curse this time we can't have another you know we just have such an overabundance of PG-13 comic book films we can't have any more okay whatever I don't think it matters it still made money um, but yeah that's the only thing that I noticed that was different Was and it's not like in the previous movie they said fuck and all this other you know they said shit a couple times and stuff like that but that was it I guess for whatever reason they decided that they couldn't have it in the movie, but whatever. 
And this is significantly shorter than the first movie because the first movie was 105 minutes with credits. This is 91 minutes. Um, so a lot of time the sequels are longer. But for whatever reason, this one was like 15 minutes shorter than the first. And I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. I just noticed that. Like I noticed that this one is significantly shorter. And that's fine because I think that both of these movies have good run times. They're under two hours, which is always a good thing. Because I know, like, the X-Men... Actually, X-Men, I think X-Men 2 was the only one that was over two hours. Spider-Man, the Spider-Man movies were a little bit over two hours. So, I mean, the, the older ones, not terrible. Excuse me. It's just these newer ones that are... Two hours and 30 minutes. Two hours and 40 minutes. Three hours. It's like, why? Why the fuck are these movies so long? But anyway, that's another thing that I really, really enjoy about these older comic book films is their run times aren't that bad. But those are the two major things that I noticed about it. Um, it was the same people involved. I can't complain. It was the same director. I think it was the same writers. Uh, John Ottman came back and did the music. It was the original cast. They added a couple cast members, which I thought was cool. Of course, it was still you know Fox and, and Marvel and such. So I liked that it was pretty much the same people involved. I think that makes your sequels better. I think that makes your movies work better when you have the same crew. You know, when you have... You know, people, the first movie was successful. Why not bring everybody back or as many as you can back? I get it, scheduling and stuff like that. But I think it just makes your movie stronger. It makes your movie better when you have the same people involved every time. That's just how I look at it. Um, they didn't get too crazy with the story and where it was going to go and, and everything, so I don't have a problem with that. I thought that was well done. I thought the cast did a good job again. Um, you know, it had all the elements of a good story, a good sequel. <laughs> yeah, they added a couple, you know, different things. They, they tweaked it a little bit, but that's what you want to do with the sequel. You want to take everything that people liked about the first movie, You want, and then you want to build on that. You want to build that up to go in a different, you know, not a different direction, but in a little bit of a bigger direction. So I'm like, okay, cool. I can get behind that. So the plot this time around is uh, Reed and Sue are trying to get married. They keep having to postpone. It's this big media event because the Fantastic Four are well known to the public, which I always enjoyed that. I always really liked that in the comics where they were kind of celebrity superheroes. Everyone knew who they were. You know, I enjoyed that. A lot of other, you know, characters wanted to be a secret, and, and that's fine, but I liked that Fantastic Four were in the open. I, I thought that was unique to, to those characters. Um, there is a anomaly that is happening on Earth. Um, this, they think it's a meteor, but it's not a meteor. It hits the Earth, and all these strange things start happening and it hits New York City during the wedding and you find out that it is the Silver Surfer. Now what I like about that is they do keep it faithful to the comic because in the comics originally the Silver Surfer was more of a villain and then he became a hero and then because the character was so popular got his own comic and everything which is cool because I love the character. I always enjoyed the Silver Surfer I really like the cartoon from the 90s. I have it back here. Unfortunately, it did not last that long. I am not a subject matter expert on Silver Surfer, nor am I on Fantastic Four, but I've always liked the character. I've always enjoyed the comics and, and such. So Silver Surfer shows up, and he is going to destroy the planet, devour the planet in a week. So the Fantastic Four are contracted by the government. The guy that contracts them is actually Andre Brager. May he rest in peace. I always liked his work as an actor. Um, it's funny because at the time 
that he did this movie, he was on ER, and he quit ER to do this film, and I think that's pretty cool. At least, in my opinion, I think that's pretty cool. So they start trying to work to stop this guy, and the military also brings in Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom, at the end of the first movie, got sent off, but Silver Surfer kind of resurrected him, and now he has to work, the Fantastic Four and him have to work together to stop it, but of course Dr. Doom has his own plans. They find out that the Silver Surfer is really a pawn, he's not really the bad guy, uh, his boss, Galactus, is the one that's going around and eating up the planets and destroying the planets. And Sue starts to kind of work with him to maybe change his ways and get him to stop. Meanwhile, Dr. Doom steals the surfboard, which is the use of all his power. And the Fantastic Four and the Silver Surfer have to work together to stop him and Galactus, which ultimately they do. They save the day, happily ever after. Sue and Reed get married. A salute. There you go. So I do, again, I like the story. I like that they built off of the first movie. I like that they had the wedding angle in there. I thought that was a, a nice little touch. I like that they brought back Doctor Doom because in the first movie he didn't die. In this movie he does die. So, you know, I guess in the, in the third movie they were going to start digging into the the villains a little bit more which was which would have been cool but since this movie didn't do that well we never got to see a third movie unfortunately because i would like to have seen a third movie with these characters and these actors and everything but i liked that they brought back dr doom i like again silver surfer was cool um well i'll cover that in a, i'll cover that you know, the thing here we go. The things that I like. I like that the cast came back. It was all the same people. I thought their chemistry was was a little bit better in this movie because they were dealing, you know, with the fact that now they're superheroes and some time has passed and they have to, you know, become superheroes and work with that into their lives. I particularly again like the chemistry between Michael Chiklis and Chris Evans. I think this one they're still not as adversarial, but they, you know, it's more like a brother relationship. It's big brother, little brother, which I like. Ewan Grufford, I like. I do, again, I like Jessica Alba as Invisible Woman. I thought she was a good, good choice. I know, again, a couple few years ago, she said all this stupid shit. Well, they're not diverse enough. And then, shut up. They, I'm sure the paycheck that you got for both of these movies was, was pretty diverse. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I like, um, what the hell's his name? Julian McMahon? Yeah, I like that they brought him back as Dr. Doom. I like Andre Brogger. It was good to see him. I always liked his work. Uh, Silver Surfer, I, I like that Lawrence Fishburne was the voice. I thought that was cool. And then Doug Jones did all of the motion capture. Doug Jones from Hellboy and Hocus Pocus and Buffy and a million other different things. But they lied to him because they didn't tell him that his not it was not going to be his voice. He didn't know until after the movie was or till filming was complete. So that's kind of a bummer, I would say, but oh well. I like that they travel a little bit. I like that they go to England and China even though they didn't film there, you know, but I like that they went to those locations. I like that they the characters traveled a little bit. Um, I like the little plot device where after Johnny touches the Silver Surfer, whoever he touches, he gets their powers. I thought that was cool. And I liked at the very end that he touched everybody and he had all their powers. It would have been cool if maybe we got to see a little bit more of that. But I thought that was a really cool plot device. Again, I haven't seen this movie in so long that I forgot. But I'm like, okay, that's that's interesting. I like that. Forgot about that. And you get to see, you know, Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm without the makeup and the suit and everything. So that was cool to see a little bit of that again. I thought, yeah, I really like that. I thought that was cool. And, and you know, he, he, got, he got all the powers. And he's freaking out. He's like, flame on! And then he turns invisible. <laughs> 
Reed, I'm on fire. You're on fire. Yes, I know I'm on fire. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Can't, again, I just have never understood why people don't like these movies. I don't know. But, I mean, is there anything else that I liked or I really liked or I wanted to talk about about the movie itself? No, I think I hit all the points. It just, you know, again, it was a good sequel. It was a good continuation. It was a good follow-up. Like I keep saying about sequels is you want to take everything that people liked about the first movie, you want to build on that and move it forward. And all good sequels do that. X-Men 2 did that well. Spider-Man 2 did that well. Some not so... Some Spider-Man 3, not so much. Amazing Spider-Man 2 did that, which I... I did like. I did quite enjoy. Can't complain. But the things I didn't like. Again, the CGI is horrible. I know this was 2007. I know CGI took over pretty much completely at this point. But the CGI is terrible in this movie. Especially for Silver Surfer. Because there is shots. There is bits of the movie where it's practical. But it's not enough. Like, the scenes when he's captured by the military and they have him strapped into the to the table or whatever a lot of that was CG like there's a couple shots where it is practical like when Sue Storm grabs his hand that's practical but a lot of those shots he's CG in there I'm like they couldn't have put Doug Jones in, in makeup like they did for some of the other stuff and put him in there so I do wish that a lot more of the Silver Surfer stuff was practical I mean, they couldn't have done, you know, a lot of the surfing stuff on green screen or blue screen. At the time, they were probably still using blue screen. They use green screen now because green is easier to blend in. But I thought the CG was terrible, much like in the first movie. Much like in a, in, in a lot of movies. It's not just comic book movies. It's not just superhero movies. But I thought the CG was awful. That's probably really the only thing I didn't like about this film. Yeah, I just thought that there was awful... See, and then, yeah, there was... I do remember hearing about this because when... Spoiler alert for a movie that came out, you know, almost 50, or almost 20 years ago now. Because this is what, 17 years old? Yeah. Hey, it's almost legal. I'm kidding, you know that. Um... The scene when Invisible Woman dies and she's crying, they had to reshoot that a couple of times because apparently Jessica Alba could not cry properly. Like, she cried too pretty. So they had to make her, like, reshoot it to cry ugly, and then they CG'd the tears in. And I'm like, okay. I thought that was weird. But yeah, I like that they upped the stakes. I did like that they killed her character off momentarily and then Silver Surfer brought her back. You know, I thought that was cool. But yeah, I think the only thing I did not like about this film was the awful CG. That's that's it. Yeah, I mean, that I would say that would be it. Everything else I liked. I don't think this is a bad movie. I don't think this is a bad sequel. I think that these, this one and the first one are the best Fantastic Four movies. I like the 90s film, don't get me wrong, but these, because they had a much bigger budget and they could do a lot more, yeah, but that's a, the 90s film, I don't care, man, that's a fun B movie. And they don't really make those anymore, so call me a sucker. Call me a softie for B movies. Get over it. <laughs> There was a video game. I never played the video game. I forgot to mention when I was when the movie came out, the first movie, I had the Doctor Doom toy. I don't know what happened to it, but I used to have the Doctor Doom toy from back in the day. But I don't have it anymore. Um when the movie came out, it did well. Again, it did better overseas, but it didn't make as much as the first film. And because it costs more, you know, they figured, eh, whatever. Because in America, it it costs it costs like a hundred and thirty million, and in America, it made a hundred and thirty million. 
but the problem was everybody went and saw it opening weekend because second weekend it dropped like 66% and then the third weekend it dropped like another 50%. So this was one of those films which still happens to this day where everybody went and saw it first weekend, word of mouth got around, and then nobody saw it after that. Unfortunately. Because I didn't I didn't see this in the theater. Honestly, I don't even really remember this being in the theater. So it was that quick. And, you know, if you don't count marketing and everything, it broke even in America for the overhead cost, but it made less than the first movie because the first movie made $150 million in America, and then it, yeah, it did better overseas. So they probably looked at it, well, it cost more, and it made less. So, let's not make any more of these. Because they were planning on doing a third movie, but because it didn't make that much, they, they canceled it. And then, again, the next year, the Cinematic Universe started, and then Disney bought out Marvel. But, I guess, Fox still owned the characters, which is why they weren't able to do it. So they made that 2015 movie to keep the rights, and then Disney bought Fox, so now they own everything. There you go. But actually, opening weekend, it did better than the first movie. It actually made more in the opening weekend than the first film. But again, because the word of mouth got out, it dropped significantly each weekend after that. And they probably pulled it from the theaters very quickly because it wasn't making that much money. But I guess at the time, it was franchise fatigue. It was comic book movie fatigue because... Spider-Man 3 came out around the same time. Yeah, that movie made more than this, but it I think it was still the lowest grossing of the of the Sam Raimi films and that word of mouth got out. Uh X-Men Last Stand came out the year before that. I know a lot of people don't like that film. I always did. I saw that hell. The only time I went to a drive-in movie theater, I saw that. I like that. It's not perfect. It has its problems. But it's, I think it's a good little decent movie. I don't think it's terrible. Yeah, so again, it's interesting because this was the tail end of that kind of first generation of Marvel films. And then the universe thing kicked off and you know how that goes. But, but yeah, I guess it was just franchise fatigue, comic book movie fatigue. People were kind of tired of it. Like, okay... Is every movie going to get a sequel? Is every movie going to make all this money? Well, I mean, back then they did. Most of them were, were fairly successful, which is why they kept making them. But yeah, I think it is a shame that we never got to see a third movie. I would like to have seen that. But now, you know, things changed because they, made a, they did a, another remake. So that was the second remake. And now they're doing a third remake. Which, again, if you like the 2015 movie, cool. If you're looking forward to the new movie, cool. I'm not. I didn't like the 2015 movie. We'll cover that next. But I like this one. I thought this was a good little sequel. That's just me. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Server. Now that I actually remember the movie. <laughs> but I do like it. I do think again that this one and the first movie are the best Fantastic Four films. They're fun. They know what they are. Yeah, they take themselves seriously. Not too seriously, but they do take themselves seriously. But you could tell that they had fun making them, and the chemistry is really good with the cast, and they're fun little comic book movies. They're not the greatest movies ever made. They're not going to be held on this pedestal, but they're fun, and they're entertaining, and that's what I want, and that's what everybody else wants. Unfortunately, next, I have to talk about the 2015 film, but we'll cover that when we cover that. But I hope, again, that you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching, as always, and we'll talk to you real soon. Later.